this video is on how to rebuild a Spicer 43 160 140 transaxle uh, import shaft rebuild. You'll find this on many riding lawn mowers. This happens to be in the back. This is what drives your wheels. So we're going to get on with the video and show you what we're talking about here. Now if you remove the back plate off of your riding lawn mower, that's back square piece, you'll see a label on the transaxle labeled like this. 4360 140 real simple if you look at the red arrow that is your input shaft if you look at the blue arrow this is uh, what you want to be very careful of uh, when you're removing this bolt because it snaps real easy if you look at your parts diagram or you're on Sears direct if you look where the red arrow is there's an asterisk for the bearings these can't re be ordered separately unfortunately um, if you see this photo here, this is what the input shaft actually looks like in real life. If you go to Sears Parts Direct, you'll see that this is $133. Too expensive. Okay, you want to take your uh, transaxle apart and get it nice and clean. You can see what it looks like here. And another picture right here. You want to get all that grease and gunk. It's going to be messy. You want to try to get as clean as possible so you get something that looks like this. This is what you're uh, actually looking for. You want to get all that grease out of there and all that water. Now, if you're looking at a Granger catalog, this is your bearing number that you can get away with using. Uh, also, here's an alternate. You can also use these bearings right here. Now, if you look at your red arrows here, you'll see SCE-108. This is a common bearing. can be found in most places. Uh, you can find them on the Internet as well. These are the universal numbers you want to be looking for. Now, if you look at this picture where the arrows are, these are where your uh, brass sleeve bearings are. And you want to make sure you check these and make sure they look good. You want to make sure that they're not cracked. Uh, and you, you'll do this after you remove all your grease, of course. Now, if your bearing is bad, like the one on the left, these are places where you can order your bearings. Uh, and you can see the prices listed at the top. You're definitely going to have to end up replacing them. Now, if you end up going with the stock bearing from Sears Parts Direct, this is what it's going to look like, and here is the part number. This is your stock number for Granger for your sleeve bearing. This is the one that you're going to want to use. Uh, and this one is going to be the stock number for Motion Industries. Notice the red arrow. That's what you're looking for right there. Now, if you get your bearings at Motion Industries, highlighted by the red arrow, don't worry about the other parts. They're not important. You just want to worry about the one with the red arrow. Now, if you notice, your bearings look a little bit different than the original. Your original has a little cut in it, highlighted by the blue arrow. Your replacement, which is uh, on the left here, is completely, totally round. Doesn't make a difference. This will actually function properly, and it'll work great. You don't have to worry about that little notch, whether it's there or not. If you turn the bearings around the other way, you'll see the replacement on the left completely round. The original on the right, highlighted by the red arrow, still has a notch, as stated before. Don't worry about this. It'll still function being perfectly round. There'll be nothing wrong. You're also going to notice a difference uh, in the thickness of these. Doesn't make a difference. Uh, the replacement will still work even though it is thicker. There's actually less slack so it'll actually work better believe it or not. Now if you look here you can see with my uh, transaxle that I had. I used a 732nd drill bit and I drilled the hole in two places where you see highlighted by the red arrow. Uh, this is a big common problem. This is why your input shaft wears out because it can't get grease and water gets down in there. This, by doing this, you will reduce the chances of water getting in there and these bearings will stay lubricated and you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever with this input shaft bearing wearing out again. Now when you're ready to put this all back together, you want to make sure you get it nice and clean like you see in the picture here. Uh, you also want to make sure that all your seals are where they're supposed to be. Like I said, this should be nice and clean. I used marine grease on mine. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth using. And as you can see from the photos listed here, or the photo listed here rather, I used marine grease, got it nice and clean. And you wanna make sure you use silicon uh, around your edges and so forth. Get it really nice and nice and clean so it seals good. It's important that you get a good seal on this and make sure your surfaces are clean and you use some RTV, some silicon. Uh, shouldn't be too hard to do. It's, it's rather easy. Just make sure there's no grease. Now, I realize I went through the video kind of quick. 
uh, just to do a recap. As you can see here, the Zerg fittings or grease fittings were added. Uh, if you go back in the video, it'll show you how to do it. And uh, the input shaft assembly to get from Sears Parts Direct was $133. Instead, we replaced just the bearings. The bearings themselves, we replaced two of them for under $10. Uh, the brass uh, sleeves themselves cost $1.28 a piece. If those are bad, obviously, you're going to have to replace them. Uh, if you missed any steps, go back in the video and take a look at it. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, whether they be negative or positive, uh, feel free to leave me a message here and I'd be happy to help you out.